under our series um, Fruitful Living and Fruitful Life. Fruitful Living and Fruitful Lifestyle, part 43. Fruitful Living and Fruitful Lifestyle. I will talk becoming more result oriented. After pruning, there should be result oriented. After pruning, there shall be more fruitfulness, more productivity, more results. After pruning, there should be more results. So how do we become more result oriented after pruning? Our anchor scripture is still John chapter 15. John chapter 15, verse 1 to 5. John chapter 15, verse 1 to 5. I am divine. My father is the husband man. Every branch in me that be alone, he take it away. Every branch that be a fruit, he project that he will bring more fruit. That's been an anchor scripture for some time now. Every branch that be a fruit, they taken that does not be able, is taken away, and every band that be a fruit is that may bring more fruits. So divine pruning is not meant for everybody. God bless you, Alexis Wilson. The Lord increase you in the name of Jesus Christ. <coughs> so we continue that <coughs> excuse me, that he poured that may bring more fruit. How now you are clean through me, through the word which has spoken unto you. Abide in me and I in you. <coughs> abide in me and I abide in you. <coughs> and as, as the blood cannot be full of its ascent, it abides in the blood. No more can you accept you abide in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. It abided in me and I in him. The same bring him one food more. For without me, you can do nothing. Without me, you can bring nothing. So, how do I become more result oriented? How do I become more fruitful? Because after divine pruning, there should be more fruitfulness. After divine pruning, there should be more productivity. After divine pruning, there should be more success. After divine pruning, there should be more victories. So how do I become more fruitful? How do I become more result oriented? After divine pruning. Deuteronomy chapter 1, verses to 8. Jesus told me chapter 1, verse 2, he said, The Lord our God spoke to us in Oreb, saying, You have dwelt long in these months. Turn ye and take your journey and go to the Mount Amorites, into all the places near dying, unto in the plain, in the hills, in the vale, in the south, by the seaside. To the land of Canaanites, unto Lebanon, unto the great river, river Ephraim, the O have set the land before you. Go in, I possess the land. I have set the land before you. Go in and possess the land. We the Lord swore to your father, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give them to their seed after them. Children of Israel, they were divinely pruned. In Exodus chapter 1, verse 9 to 18, somebody was threatening and said, the king Pharaoh was threatening and said, let's make life difficult for these people so that uh, they can, they will, not come, they will not collude with our enemy to fight us. Why? Why did God allow that situation? Genesis 15, 13. Why did God allow Genesis 15, 13? God said in Genesis 15, 13, He said, of a truth, your children shall stay in a foreign land. Genesis 14, 15, 13. Genesis 15, 13. The Bible says, of the truth, the children of Israel, no shorty, they shall be a sister, be a stranger in the land they not there, and they shall serve them, they shall afflict them for 400 years. The world has come forth. Divine pruning said they shall afflict them for 400 years. He now says in verse 14, and also the nation who they shall serve will like job after what shall they come out with great substance. The law allowed the children of Israel to be afflicted because the time of more fruitfulness is near. The Lord allowed the children of Israel to be mal and to be afflicted by the Egyptians because it's their time to set up 
of the foreign land to go and possess the land. They came out of the foreign land in Egypt. They go to the wilderness, they go to Kadesh Barnea. After leaving the living, living after leaving the, the Egypt, they are no more slaves. They were free on the way to promised land. They go to Kadesh Barnea. They saw comfort in Kadesh Barnea. They saw security in Kadesh Barnea. They saw satisfaction in Kadesh Barnea. So they refused to leave. They want to stay there. They can't deliver results again. They can't be more fruitful. So from the one thing that a man must do to be more result oriented is to stand out of stagnation. Number one thing that a man, a woman must do to be more result oriented is to break up the fallow ground. To exist where you have been so long for. God is saying to the children of Israel in that, that Deuteronomy chapter 1, 6 to 8, break up to new ground. God said to them, no, if a man must be result oriented, you must break into a new ground. If a man must be achieve more result, you must break into a new ground. If a man must achieve more result in business, in ministry, in career, you must break into a new ground. God spoke to Moses, you want more fruitfulness? You want more result? You want more success? Get out of that land, that mountain, or you have been there for years. Go and break into a new territory. Go and possess the land. The question now is, how do I break the fallow land? Break up the fallow land. Break up the fallow land. Break up to a new ground. In Hosea chapter 10, Verse 12. Hosea chapter 10, verse 12. The word of God said, Sow to yourself in righteousness. Reap in mercy. Break up your fallow ground. Kadesh Barnea, Mount Oren, has been a mountain that the people have stayed for years. They were not, they are not going. The land of promise, the Canaan, represent the fallow land. Represent the new, the fallow land, or utilize land, or use land, or use opportunity. So to the righteousness, so to your righteousness, reap in, break up your fallow ground. It is time to seek the Lord till He come and rain righteousness upon the land. Jeremiah chapter four verse three. Jeremiah chapter four verse three. Jeremiah chapter four verse three. The same thing we were told, Jeremiah chapter 4, verse 3. Jeremiah chapter 4, verse 3. It's it reads. It says, For thou for, for thou dost hear the Lord to the men of Judah and men of Jerusalem. God is speaking to you, He's speaking to me tonight. The children of God. He said, Break up your fallow ground. So not among the thorns. Break up your fallow ground. So not among the thorns. Break up your fallow ground. So not among the thorns. Break up your fallow ground. So the question is, what is a fallow ground? Because somebody wants to be more result oriented, somebody wants to become more fruitful, we want to get more results about their fallow ground. What is a fallow? A fallow it means unused. A fallow means unused. A fallow means uncultivated. A fallow means unplanted. A fallow means inactive. Something that's not been used, something that been left alone, something that been abandoned. But what does the ground mean? Break up your fallow ground. 
in the scripture, grand can refer is referred to as the art. In Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23, he said, Guard your heart with all diligence for the personal issues of life. Luke chapter 7, verse 7, the art refers to the ground, the ground upon which good and evil proceed. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23, the ground, the art represents the ground for which evil and good proceed out. Proverbs 4, 23. The ground can also be referred to as the soil type. The ground can also be to as the soil type. In Matthew chapter 13, verse 1 to 3. In Matthew chapter 13, verse 33, the Bible talks about the good ground called the lonely soil. It talks about the stony ground called the clay. It talks about the tongue called the sandy soil. Matthew 13, 1 to 8. So the ground can also mean heart. It can mean soil time. The ground can mean doors. For the purpose of this topic, we are going to be referring to ground as doors, opportunities, new things, skills, gifting, calling. In 1 Corinthians 16, 9, we read, 2 Corinthians 16, the Bible says, A great and effectual door will be opened to me, which is a grand. Now, in Isaiah chapter 6, verse 8, Isaiah chapter 6, verse God said to Isaiah, Who shall I send? An opportunity exists. Who is God going to send to be the prophet that will make sure that is to preach the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ? Isaiah said, Here, here, I'm send me. Is an, a grant can represent an opportunity. A grant can represent new things, new ideas, new innovation. Isaiah chapter 43, 18 to 19. Isaiah chapter 18, the Lord said, Remember not the former thing, consider not the things of the old, for I will do a new thing. So the grant that we are referring to in this service is to mean opportunities. New things, ideas, skill, gifting, doors. So, which means, if I will say break up the fallow ground, then you are saying, make sure you use the un, un, unused opportunity, identify new opportunities. And the ground we are talking about, the good ground we are talking about, the opportunity can be good. It can be a good opportunity, like God said to Isaiah, well, I, I need to send someone, say, here I am. It can be a very bad or grand, bad opportunity, like what David did in 1 second Samuel chapter 11, that he killed, he saw a woman and killed her husband. Sleep with her. The, the Bible refers to good grand. Matthew 13, 8. It talk about stolen ground. Matthew 13, 5. It talk about tongues. Matthew 13, 7. So, when we talk about fallow ground, before we come, there are three words here. Break up, the fallow, and the ground. Break up, the fallow, and the ground. We said there is fallow mean unutilized, until uncultivated. We said grand we find here as opportunity at all. If a man must be more result oriented, you must enter into new opportunities. You must enter into new opportunities. So what is now the fallow ground? The fallow ground contextually simply mean unutilized opportunity, unused opportunity, idea not yet exploited. Careers idea, business idea, not exploited. Because without ideas, without opportunity, and new ideas, new opportunity, there can be more results. So, follow grammar on utilize opportunities, on identify opportunity. Opportunity in the business, in the career, in the ministry, in booking, not yet discovered. Ideas, divine ideas, not yet exploited. For instance, the children of Israel spent 40 years in the Kadesh Barnea, in the wilderness, instead of 40 days. Instead of 11 days, the journey from Kadesh Barnea to the to, to Canaan, it's just 11 days. And they spent 
40 years there. Why? Comfort. Why? Satisfaction. Why? Security. Why? Fear of the Lord. So every time you talk about opportunity, we're talking about follow gradient. We're talking about unutilized opportunity. We're talking about doors that be open but not yet accessed. You no, know, sometimes doors can be open to you and you are not accessing it. Sometimes doors can be open to people, doors in ministry, doors in business, doors in career, and somebody refuse to access it. That what happened to the man called Peter. He has doors open to him in the Gentile nation. He didn't fully exploit it. He does it. So, follow ground can be unutilized on doors that be open that you have not accessed. Opportunity not utilized. Opportunity abandoned. Opportunity not identified in the business, in the career, in the ministry. So therefore, and why? Why are people not identify opportunities? Simply because of three things. Fear of failure, disappointment of the past, procrastination. Oh, that your Amma, the Lord bless you. You are, you are coming from South Sudan. The Lord bless you. The Lord increase you. The Lord cause rain to shine upon you. In the name of the Lord, the Lord will enlarge your territory. You shall become more resort oriented. You shall become more fruitful in the name of Jesus Christ. So we are talking to the how do I become more resort oriented? Number one is that you must look for new opportunities. You must seek for new opportunities. You must identify. New business, career, skill opportunities. We are only going to get new results if we don't do things using our old ways. No one keep on doing the same thing and expect higher results. No one keep on doing the same and expect higher results. You must do different things using different methods to get a better result. So therefore, you know, when we talk about follow grand, follow grand, we talk on identified business, career, skill, or like my gifting and calling. For instance, when Joseph started his life in Genesis 37, verse 10 to it, was just a dreamer. He wasn't an interpreter. Joseph was only a dreamer. He wasn't an interpreter. So therefore, Joseph cannot get higher result than be a supervisor to his father because he was just only a dreamer. But by Genesis chapter 40, Genesis chapter 40, when Joseph discovered the gifting of his life as interpreter of dreams, Genesis 40, 1 to 20, jo jo Joseph interpreted the dream of Butler and Baker. Joseph dream interpretation the gifting of dream interpretation was what gave him access to the palace. May I begin to somebody tonight the name of Jesus? Your gifting will lead you to access to the palace. Your gifting will open doors to you in the presidency, in the high place in Jesus' name. Until Joseph discovered his gifting as an interpreter, he couldn't achieve more results. When Joseph was in father's house, even when he was in Potiphar's house, he was ordinary an overseer because why? He has not discovered the gifting of interpretation of dreams. So therefore, he can only attract only one man. But by the time he discovered the gift of interpretation, he began to attract crop of men, big men, the gift of a man making way for him, making to stand before great men. Proverbs 18, 16. The Proverbs, the moment did Joseph discover his gift of interpretation of dream, he was able to stand before kings, the great people, the butler, the baker, and even the king pharaoh. Until before that time, his result was limited. 
the same Joseph, until he discover his skill as a treasurer. As he intellect discover his skill as a treasurer and saving an investment expert. He wasn't able to become the treasurer of Pharaoh. Genesis chapter 41, 47 to 57. Genesis 41, 47 to 57. Or did Joseph discover that gifting of saving and investment? The career skill to save and to invest appropriately. Or did Joseph discover that he couldn't be a treasurer of Pharaoh? Again, Joseph discovered business skills. It was his career skill that made him a treasurer. He discovered a business skill, a business of being an economist, the trade by battle system. Genesis 47, 15 to 31. Genesis 47, it was the discovery of the grief of, of his business acumen, his business skill that delivered to him an economic minister and finance minister. He was able to get more results. The land of Egypt. As long as Peter was ordinary a fisherman, he did not discover his gift, his calling as an evangelist and an apostle. He did not, result was limited, he couldn't achieve more result. Before Luke chapter 5, 1 to 10, we never had of any substantial or significant result achieved by Peter. But the moment he discovered his gifting, is calling in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, in John chapter 21, verse 3 to 21. The moment he discovered that he is sold out for God, is to be an evangelist and apostle of the world. The moment he discovered he's an apostle, the next thing, and he sat down an apostolic work. The Bible says the same Peter delivered a phenomenal result. He preached a gospel in Acts chapter 2, 37 to 43. In Acts chapter 10, the Bible says 3,000 souls was won. He preached another message in Acts chapter 4, verse 1. The Bible says 5,000 souls was won for a man that is timid, for a man that is timid, for a man that is fearful, just by discovering his calling. He was achieving more results. Just discovered his calling. He didn't know he was a fisher of men. He didn't know he was an apostle. He was wasting his time. He was achieving less result as a fisher. Nah. Or he discovered the calling as a fisher of men. Things did not change. I decree that somebody tonight, you will discover your calling so that you can achieve more results. By discovering your calling, you are able to achieve more results. What of Gideon? What of Gideon? Judges chapter 6, from verse um, 6 to 30. Judges chapter 6, from 6 to 30. Gideon was a farmer. He thought he was called as a farmer. Gideon thought he was born as a farmer. Gideon thought this purpose is to be to continue family business of farming. Gideon never discovered he was a mighty man of valor. Gideon never knew his purpose to be the judge of Israel. He never knew. So therefore, he remained low. He couldn't achieve anything or little result in life, little success in life, little productivity. He was not able to achieve productivity, success, victory, until he became a judge in Israel. He discovered purpose. He discovered he was created to be a judge, not to be a farmer. He was created to be a leader, not to be to be led. And after that time. Gideon became a mighty man. He became a champion. He became a judge in Israel. And results came up. Breaking off, follow the me, discover new opportunity. Breaking off, discover new opportunity, sister. Discover this opportunity. Discover breaking up your follow the me. Please step out. Discover your giftings. Discover your calling. Discover your purpose. Dis identify business skill you have you don't know. Identify career skill that is dumb and you don't know. 
Identify your gifting that you are not aware of. Identify your purpose in life. That's where there will be result. Result, you will not generate more result except in your purpose, except in your calling, except in your gifting. Until Joseph discover that he's created to lead the world, that's when he begins to manifest results. So when we say when we say break up your fallow ground, we say in your career, in your business, in your ministry, what are the opportunities you are here to discover? What are the new ones you are here to identify? Look at the children, my woman. She was a successful woman, a great business woman in Shune. But she didn't know there's another opportunity to be a great woman in the far away Philistine. Until the man of God came in 2 Kings chapter 8, 2 Kings chapter 1, verse 1 to 8, to tell him that young man, your madam, go back to another land because God has called for family in the shunem. But when the woman went to Philistine, he discovered a new business opportunity. He had, he got, she got more results. God bless you, Shua, God's in larger territory. We are talking about becoming more result oriented. Becoming more result oriented. The only thing that will make you to become more result oriented after Fuku, after divine pulling, is to understand or discover opportunities you have not tapped, you have not exploited in your career, in your business, in your ministry, in your gifting. Look at Daniel, for instance. Daniel, the Bible scholar said he was a lecturer, a scientist. But uh, in Daniel chapter 1, verse 3 to 8, he was enrolled in the business school, in leadership school. It was a new career entirely that gave him more results. Result vis a vis, he was 10 times better. Daniel chapter 1, verse 17, he was 10 times better. Result which are vis a vis. He was able to interpret and know the dream of Nebuchadnezzar. Daniel chapter 2, verse 1 to 49. In Daniel chapter 2, verse 46, she was promoted by just going to a new career as led by God. Becoming more your result oriented requires you to discover new ministerial opportunities in the minister of God. New ministry of God, the minister of God, Peter, in Acts chapter 10, verse 1 to 14, God told him, it's time to go to Gentile. Peter was not ready. He reluctantly went to Cornelius, but that was the end. For adventure, if you are exploited the opportunity of the Gentiles, Peter would have been greater. Peter abandoned the ministry opportunity to minister to Gentiles. So, really, the question tonight is how do I break that fallow ground? We are talking about fallow ground, mean new opportunity, not identified in business, in career, new ideas in business, in ministry, in career, not identified. New, new knowledge, you have not tapped, you have it, you have not implemented. But the question is that how do you break that fallow ground? How do you exploit that opportunity? How do you use that opportunity? Breaking up the fallow ground, saying, breaking a new ground, advancing and making progress. Breaking the fallow ground means breaking new ground in business. A new grand in career, a new grand in business, a new grand in ministry, a new grand in marriage, so that you can deliver more results. Breaking new grand, breaking the fallow grand means breaking new grand 
with opportunity, a new a new location, a new be advancing. You are not just breaking the ground. You are advancing. You are progressing in everything you do according to the will of God. Breaking new ground means break out of stagnation. Stop dwelling on the mountain. Stop dwelling on the source of the past. New result can never come out of an old place that will be fully exhausted. New result might not come out from a place that highly exhausted and an old place. Break out of this out of stagnation. That's what God was told, telling Moses in Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 6 to 8. He said, Tell my people, you have tried so long, Mount Ore. You have been so successful as a lawyer. You have been so successful as a lawyer, maybe a litigation lawyer. You have been so successful as an accountant. You have been so successful as a banker. We are the more opportunities. What of you will begin to do digital? What of you begin to do major and acquisition lawyer? What breaking new, break out of the old to new, break out of the old to new, break out of stagnation. God was telling the children of Israel, come out of this stagnation. You have been on this month of Kadesh Bamiya of, of Mount Oreb. Mount Oreb is not the promised land. Many of us are too successful, we are too, so, too comfortable in the old victories, old successes, old blessings. No, sir. No, man. It is time to break out of that limitation of old victories, old successes, old achievements. Advance forward. Make progress. Exploit new opportunity in career. Exploit new opportunity in business as led by the Holy Spirit. Refuse to remain in the same position. So, when we're talking about breakouts, the phonogram, what are we talking about? It also can be a metaphor. Simply mean dismantle the mediocrity, move out of mediocrity, ordinary. You want to you want to be to achieve more result. Get out of ordinary ordinary blessing, ordinary success, ordinary victory. Separate yourself from unprofitable allies. Friends, you want to break a fallow ground, you want to achieve more results, the one you need to do is to separate yourself from mediocrity. Dismantle mediocrity. Say no to mediocrity. Mediocrity is, oh, we have been doing it like this and it's been giving us results. That's mediocrity. Seek a new way to get a new result. Separate them from profitable money and as them from profitable friends. What is unprofitable allies? Law is unprofitable to Abraham. Genesis 31 to 15. So Paul had to separate himself from Abraham so that he can get to his promised land, so that he can achieve more result. It was after Abraham separated from Lot that God told him in verse 15. Can you look around? Whatever you see is what you will get. If after God said, if after Abraham separated from Lot, that became very great. Genesis 24 35. It was after Abraham separated from Lot <coughs> that God spoke to him again. Genesis 17. Walk before me and be thou perfect. After Abraham separated from Lot, is when he became father of Isaac. Genesis 18. Genesis 21. Lot was unprofitable for the from Abraham because God didn't ask him to go with law. He was a wrong body. He was a terrible body. What's some profitable allies? Mark, John Mark, in Acts chapter 15, 35 to 41. John, John Mark, in Acts 15, 
Chapter 5, who was unprofitable to the work of ministry. For Apostle Paul, he separated and took this man called Silas. No wonder when they went to Acts chapter 16, the Macedonia, the Bible said Paul and Silas prayed because Silas was profitable. Mark would not have delivered the same result, even though it became better later. To achieve more result, we must break out and separate ourselves from demonic, evil, wicked elders. God does not want your good. David and Saul, the ally between David and Saul was not profitable to David. Right from Genesis 4 Samuel chapter 18, verse 8, Saul has been heavy David. By 4 Samuel chapter 19, verse 1, he lays he, he gave a match on that. Go and kill David. It was unprofitable ally to David. So he needed to be separated so that he can achieve more result. There are unprofitable camps. There are unprofitable locations. Jacob was in Iran for, for over 20 years. It was not profitable. He didn't achieve anything. But he was going, it was unprofitable to him. He's, he served a man for 14 years to get a wife. He was no one, he has nothing. So Aram was not a profitable land for him. It was a place of training. It was a place of training. You can't deliver more results in a training ground. You cannot achieve result, more result in a training ground. Kadesh Bamiya for children was a training ground. So the result cannot be there. <clears throat> Kadesh Bamiya was a training ground for children of Israel. So the result cannot be more. It can achieve more result. You can never achieve significant result. Because you can't even result in the, in the training ground. Aram was a training ground for Jacob. He was not meant to deliver. He was supposed to be trained and be prepared to deliver result. Kadesh Bamiya was not a, was not a place of result. It was not a place of training. So you cannot stay in a place of training and expect to deliver result. Potiphar House was a place of training for Joseph. He cannot achieve result of Prime Minister there. Potiphar's house was in Genesis 39, 1 to 20. Potiphar's house was a place of training for Joseph. So therefore, no significant result that would take him to higher ground will happen there. Prison was a place of another, it's a transient place, it's a place of another training. There can be no result, tangible, significant for him there again. For more result, he must go to the palace. So these are a profitable location, not because they are bad, but they are not meant to deliver more results for you there. Because what? A training ground, a training ground is not a place of manifestation. It's not a place of fulfillment. It's not a place where the star will shine. It's just a training ground. So you cannot turn a training ground to a place of manifestation and expect Result, more result, no. Some business, some career, some vocation, they are profitable because they are not meant to deliver result for you, more result for you. They are just a play. The business is to train you. The career is to train you. If they, are not the, they are not the career of business that will deliver that more result. Fishing was good for Peter, but it was not a place that would showcase him to the world. Oh, the desert was good for Moses. In Ezra chapter 3, verse 1, in the it was a good place of training for him. It was a good business of training, but it was not a place to deliver results for him. Moses was supposed to be a shepherd of people. 
Israel, but not a shepherd of sheep. So unless he transit from a shepherd of sheep to a shepherd of Israel, result will not manifest. So to him, Moses, the desert land, the backside of the desert, in his father in lost place, is not a place of manifestation. It's not a place you can deliver results because the place of my is the place of result delivery. So the question is, how do I break into the new ground? How do I break into the new ground? Oh, because we are not going to finish tonight. How do I break into the new ground? Number one, and now we are going to stop tonight. <coughs> Call and seek call. We can't break into a new grant. We can't discover new opportunities. Except God lead us and guide us. Jeremiah 29, 12 to 13. Jeremiah 29, 12 to 29. The, the Bible says, Then shall you call upon me. You shall go and pray unto me. I will hearken unto you. You shall seek me for a new opportunity. And the word of God said, as you seek me for a new opportunity, you will find me. And you will search for me and with all your heart. We must call on God for new opportunity. We must seek his faith to direct us to this new opportunity in the business, in the career, in the ministry. Why? Because God is a God of new things. Remember, more results mean new things. God is a God of new things. Isaiah chapter 3, verse 18 to 19. Isaiah chapter 14, 18 to 19. He said, remember not the former thing. He's a God of new things. So every child of God that is still doing, doing the old is not obeying God's instruction. God is a God of new things. Remember ye not the former thing, neither consider the things of the old. Behold, I will do a new thing. God is a God of new things, new ground, new blessing, new opportunity, new level. He now said, I will do a new thing, it shall spring forth. You shall not know it. He said, what the new thing God wants to do? He wants to make a way in the wilderness. The new thing God wants to do for you is to make a way in the wilderness that is that complicated thing, that ble- He wants to make a way there. Say, and leave us in the desert. Those are serious things. Which means God is saying, whatever you think is hard, as difficult, it's because it's in your mind. It's because it's your attitude. Because why? As far as God is concerned, He will make a way in the rivers. He will make a way in the world that can leave us in desert. Leave us. Leave us in desert. Desert is a ground where there is no water. And God said he will make a river there. That is more opportunity in this land, in this season where people are saying things are bad. God is saying, even in this situation like this, there is going to have more opportunity. Leave us in the desert. When we seek God, in prayer, when we call on it, he will tell us the new things. He will show us the new things to be done in our business, in our career, in our ministry. Why is we more you call on God and seek on God? Number one, God is a God of new things. He does not like old things. God is not interested in old ways of things. Is a God of new things. Number two, why must I call and seek God for new things for 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 to, for my more results? Is a God of open doors. God is a God of open doors. Revelation three a. God is a God of open door. That is what He wants. God has created new door for you and me. Is a God of more doors. Revelation 3 8. He said, I know thy work. I said before thee an open door. No man can shut it. 
God is opening new door for us every day, every minute, every second. Are we as are we are we seeing it? God is the God of open doors. Whatever opportunities new doors work, God is ready to open it. Just call and seek him. <coughs> God is a God of enlargement. Genesis chapter 1 verse 28 And God bless it and said, be fruitful, be multiplied, dominate. God is a God of enlargement. He's not used to people restricting themselves to one thing. God is a God of enlargement. That's why when Jabez Je prayed to God, on First Chronicle 4, 9 to 10, and God, as a God, oh Lord, you bless and enlarge me. God enlarge him. Because why? Enlargement is his name. So that's why we must call and seek on God. Because when you are comfortable, when the children of Israel was comfortable in Kadesh Bamiya, nothing was happening. When Moses was comfortable in the backside of his father-in-law's business in Desa, Nothing new was happening. When, when Peter was so comforted with fishing business, cutting one or two few fish a day, no result, new result was being achieved. The first thing, you must get out of comfort zone and call and say, God, God, I need new things. Get out of comfort zone and say, God, I need to do to do new things in my life, in my business, in my career. In my ministry. Because why? God is always giving people opportunities. He gave Paul the opportunity in that chapter 9, from verse 8 to 17, when I said, God, this person is wicked. He said, God said, No, it's my chosen vessel to bear the light before the gender. At 9 15 to 17. He said, It's a chosen vessel to bear the light to the Gentile, to the king in Israel. He gave Paul that opportunity. He never missed it. He, he, he utilized it. He gave Paul the opportunity to minister the entire. Paul never he, he, he utilized to the fullest. He gave the same opportunity to Peter, but Peter didn't utilize it. No wonder Paul was greater and was able to cover more ground than Peter because why? He was ready to take more opportunities. When God was calling on, say, in Isaiah chapter 6, verse 8, He said, I want to look, am I going to send to these people of Israel to preach the gospel? Isaiah said, Here I am, send me. There's an opportunity for you at the top. There's an opportunity for me at the top. Are you ready to take that opportunity from heaven? There are divine opportunity for you. For instance, if one day God doesn't tell somebody, I said, You see, I want you to go and go to Iraq. To go and preach gospel. It's an opportunity. But somebody might see it as, oh, you don't like me. If God give an opportunity to somebody, okay, come go and preach gospel in an interland, in one of the Pacific land in Europe, it's an opportunity. But somebody say, oh, no, 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 why not US? That is you. God is always giving up. He's always looking for men to send in the business place, in the career. God is looking for businessmen, businesswomen that will conduct business in an ethical way. He's looking for people to serve. God is looking for daughters and sons in the corporate world that will not be lying, that will not sleep with their boss to become a top person, that will not sleep with their boss to become a top God is looking, he's looking for people to to send to the top place, to higher place in the business, in the career. Are you ready? The opportunity is there. Beloved, will you take God the opportunity? And we have not finished this topic. We are continuing next week. Will you take that opportunity? I'd like us to pray to God this evening. I'd like you to talk to him. Say, Lord. Here I am, send me. Here I am, I'm open. I'm receptive to opportunity you give me. Because that opportunity will lead me to receive more crowns. 
Please have mercy on us. Please help us, Lord. Set up in the new God, the new opportunity. We are, we are ready, Lord. Have mercy, Lord. We have mercy, Lord. We are ready for a new grant, a new opportunity to bring more grant. Please have mercy. Please have mercy. Send us, O oh Lord. Send us, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. In the business place, in the career place, we are looking for men and women in the career to do the right thing. Please send us, Lord. Send, you are looking for genuine businessmen, genuine businesswomen who will turn things around, who will do business in an ethical way. Here we are, send us, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. You are looking for genuine people in the vocation that will not call five and call and say twenty. Lord, here we are. Send us, Lord. Libro Here we are. Please send us, Lord. We are ready for you, Lord. The grace to do your will in the workplace, in the business, in the vocation. In the, please grant them to us, Lord. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, we just want to thank you tonight. Thank you for speaking to us. Thank you for. We are ready for more results. But we are ready for more challenges. We are ready for more assignment from you. Father, you have sent us on us. Use us as your battle has. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you, sir. God bless you, man. You are here tonight. You are here to surrender your life to Jesus. I like to pray with you. Just pray this prayer. Say, Lord Jesus, thank you for today. I come to you today. I confess you as my Lord and Savior. I have that your blood wash away my sins. I would declare born again and say, in Jesus' name. God bless you, sir. God bless you. Try and share this make to your friend. I mean, I'll get our media to, to remove the message alone and share it separately because you need to, if you want to achieve more results, you must break off from old habits. You must break off from stagnation. If you want to achieve more results, you must be ready to discover new gifting, new, new gifting in your life, new, new gifting, new career opportunities. You must be able to identify new business opportunities. If you are ready to get, you want to achieve more results in life, you must be ready to call on God to do new things. You must be desperate and ready for it. And the Lord will bless you and will keep you in Jesus' name. By the special grace of God, tomorrow, 1 p.m., we'll be doing a destiny recovery service prayer. Please join us, and the Lord bless you, Jesus. Before then, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the Lord Jesus, be with us now and forever. Amen. Surely, goodness and shall follow all the days of our life, and we shall dwell as we know forever and ever. God bless you. See you tomorrow, 1 p.m., East Africa. Everyone, West Africa.